Hi, today I'm going to show you a concept I call Super Simple 145. Uh, it's an easy way to find accompaniment chords in the right hand uh, within a uh, certain position of the board and using a really nice voice leading approach so that you can uh, have the chords sound really good transitioning from one to the next. Uh, we'll do this in C major because that's a really easy way to identify things for now, but you can do it in any key you want. Uh, it's all based on uh, relative positioning of the chords. First, let's identify uh, the region of the board where we're going to start working and uh, uh, what the notes are within that region of the board that we're going to use. So we'll start with uh, a third, third finger C major scale. So with C, uh, with our third finger there, uh, and this is on the, um, on the B string at fret number 13. And I'm only going to use uh, these four strings, the A, uh, e, B, and F sharp string, and that way uh, everybody uh, can play along with what's on the video regardless of whatever tuning you're in. So we start with that C, and that's at fret number 13 again. And that's the root of our scale, and it'll be the root of our one chord as well. We call that the one chord because it's the chord that's rooted on uh, the first note of the scale that forms the key that we're playing in. At this point it's C major, so C is the one chord. C major is the one chord. So there's the root, and then we have the second, and then the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth, and that's as high as we're gonna go uh, for right now. Uh, and then we go back down, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then down to uh, the major seventh, down below that uh, root note, we're also gonna use that as well. So uh, the major triad uh, for the one chord is just the root, the third, and the fifth, okay? And I like the way it sounds as I play it with the bass note. So there I am playing C in my bass, C, E, G, there's my major triad. And that's the one chord. And we use Roman numerals to identify these chords. Uh, so one, uh, capital Roman numerals for major chords, lowercase Roman numerals for minor chords. So the one chord is C major. Okay. Now, if I go up the scale, a one, two, three, four, C, D, E, F, the fourth note of that scale is F. So the, the four chord is going to be uh, an F major chord. And what I want to do is, instead of just taking that, um, that chord that I'm playing and moving it up a string, which would give me that F up there, that's kind of a jarring transition between those. So what I want to do is to try to keep all the chords on the same strings if possible, and that gives you a more unified sound. So I'll play my F this way. I'm going to move up to the F here with my second finger. Okay, so the notes in my chord are F, A, and C. Well, I have an A right here. Okay, that was the sixth note of my scale, remember? And then I have uh, the C down here below. So my four chord uh, has the F in the middle. And we call that inver an inversion of the chord because the root isn't on the bottom of the chord. In fact, we call this the second inversion of the chord uh, because the fifth is on the bottom. When we play an inversion shape with the third on the bottom, we're going to call that the first inversion chord. So let me play an F in the bass with that, okay? Great sound, big fat sound. So the one chord is here. That's the C major. And the four chord is here. That's the F major. And one of the things I really like about fingering the chords this way is that uh, I've got my hand uh, consistent with the notes of the chord. I've got third finger on the bottom, first finger on the top, second finger in the middle. And when I play the four chord, I've got the same thing. So I don't have to look at my hand. Uh, I don't have to do a lot of um, uh, finger switching around in order to go back and forth between those two things. One chord, four chord. So what you'll notice is we go up to play the four chord. And now in order to find the five chord, okay, so if I go up my scale, C, D, E, F, G, that's the fifth note, okay, so that's the root of the next chord. Now, uh, in this position, my G is going to be the top note of that chord, okay, so I play G, and then I need a D, and then a B, and you remember that B was the seventh down below the root of the, of the scale that we were playing earlier. So that G major chord... It's G major chord because it has a major third in it and root, major third, fifth. That's called the first inversion shape. So we have the, the root on the top and the third on the bottom. That's our first inversion. So our five chord is in the first inversion. Our one chord is in a root position shape. Okay, and then our four chord is in uh, the second inversion shape. 
So with the five chord, uh, we're not using the second finger, we're just playing what's called a double stop. Or we're playing um, the root and the fifth both with the, uh, with the first finger. And I can take that top note and I can move it down a whole step. And that gives me my dominant seventh. So I have my third, my fifth, and my dominant seventh right there. So that gives me uh, an alternate way to play the five chord. So I could play the five chord like this. Or I could play a dominant seventh and go back to the one chord. Uh, but sometimes people like to actually go up to play that dominant seventh chord. So uh, an easy way to find that is to go to the four chord we were playing earlier, right? And then we're just going to move that whole shape up a whole step, and that's going to give us the five chord. All right, now in this case, remember, it's the second inversion shape, and so that means that the root is in the middle of the chord. So there's G right there, B, D, like that. So if I want to turn that root note into the dominant seventh, then I just drop it down a whole step. I have to refinger the chord a little bit. Third finger, first finger, second finger. And again, I'm still just using these three fingers for all these shapes. It's really easy to find the chords when you're only using the three fingers instead of using four. So there's my five chord uh, higher up without uh, the dominant seventh. And here it is with the dominant seventh. So you can hear that transition down like that. So. That's the, the fifth without the dominant seventh, and then with the dominant seventh. So everything is nice and close together. It's all on the same three strings, which uh, is what we call voice leading the chords. Uh, the voices of the chords are leading into each other. So there's the five chord in the, the uh, lower position that we were playing earlier. Uh, uh, you hear how it leads. That leads very nicely together. Now, uh, if I'm starting these uh, chords with a different inversion, I have the same exact uh, relative movement that I can use. So, for example, let's say I want to play my second inversion C major shape instead of my uh, root position C major shape. This is still a one chord because I'm in C major. Okay, but I'm playing second inversion there, and when I go up, to play uh, the F major chord, what's going to happen is I'm going to end up playing the first inversion shape for that. So I'm playing second inversion for the one chord, first inversion for the four chord, and then I go back to the one chord here, and when I play the five chord, then I'm going to play uh, the root position shape with the five chord, like that. So again, I'm still using the three different shapes, but I'm starting with uh, the second inversion shape for the C. So that's right in the middle, and then I go up to my four chord, down for my five chord, and back to my one chord. Okay. Now there are other chords uh, that may, we may uh, want to know that are really easy to find in relation to these chords. So we have not just these major chords that we encounter, but we also have uh, minor chords that we're going to encounter. And a really, really easy way to find the minor chords is to take the major chords and then alter them. So if I start out with my scale that I, um, that I was showing you at the beginning, C, D, E, F, G, A, right there, then I have um, uh, the A is the sixth note of the scale, and that's the root note of the A minor chord. So what you'll find is that if you want to uh, change uh, a major chord into its relative minor chord. So in this case, I'm going from C to A, C major to A minor, okay? Then all I have to do is change the fifth of that major chord into the sixth, which gives me the voicing of the minor chord. So the sixth note of the scale, A, all right? And then I still have E and C. Those are the three notes of the minor triad. In this case, I'm playing the first inversion of the minor triad because I have the root on the top, the minor thirds on the bottom, okay? And the fifth is in the middle. So here's my one chord. And then to play the relative minor of that one chord, all I gotta do is double stop with my second finger here. And I can keep that really, really close uh, to my one chord. so easy to find and uh, much easier than trying to say, well, what are the notes I need for that minor chord when all I have to do is remember that 
A minor is the relative minor of uh, the one chord. It's the sixth. It's the minor of the sixth note of the scale. So that's the one chord. And there's my sixth A minor right there. Okay. Similarly, if I was down here and I was playing that uh, second inversion shape of the C major that I was playing earlier, and I go to the relative minor there, the fifth is on the bottom in this chord shape. So I'm going to take that fifth and I'm going to move it up a whole step. Now some people will howl in protest here and say, well, Greg, how can you play that chord comfortably? I want to use my pinky to play that chord. Well, what I suggest is that you let your index finger lay down more on the strings. You don't have to play with the tip of your index finger all the time because these strings are being activated higher up on the instrument. So if I play this chord here, my index finger is actually touching all three strings, but the only one you're hearing it uh, activate is the top string. And then I come down here and I play my A minor like that. And my, again, my index finger is laying on these strings. It's not touching the lowest bass string, uh, so there's no problem there. So uh, if I have my one chord here, I'll go back to my original position here. very uh, commonly occurring related chords, the one chord, the four chord, the five chord, and the minor sixth. And uh, you'll see we'll use a lowercase Roman numeral to show that minor sixth uh, to identify that. Now I can take this pattern and I can move it anywhere on the board. If I wanted to play a song in F, then I move uh, everything to F. Here's my F. Okay, so that's my one chord, four chord, five chord, one six very easy to find no problem and there are other chords uh, can, uh, relatively close to the chords that we're playing now that we can also find so for example if you're if you need to find uh, the the major of the three all right so the the scale is C D E that's the third note right so if I'm gonna play uh, a major chord for the three E major in this case right that's just a half step below the four chord, so that's the three, okay? And maybe I want to have a dominant. Now that gives me a really nice uh, leading back to the minor six. So um, I recorded a, an instrumental version of Hallelujah, but uh, if I was going to be accompanying a singer, then I could use this strategy to, to play chords uh, behind them. So here's, um, well, I heard there was a sacred chord that David played in. The fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift. And then here's what I love, because it comes in here and it goes, the baffled king. So there's the, the five chord, and then it comes down here and plays the major of the three chord. Composing hallelujah. Back to the sixth chord there. Boy, that's up out of my range pretty pretty far. So uh, again, the end of that was there's the... singing but uh, there we go so uh, very easy approach to apply uh, one chord in the middle go up for the four chord keep going up for the five chord or go down for the five chord uh, but uh, if you got to find it in a hurry I suggest go down for that five chord so one chord four chord five chord one chord okay if I was playing the um, the first inversion shape for my root chord I go up to the root position for the four chord and then down to the uh, second inversion shape for the five chord. So uh, super simple.